Uh, there are many different ways to say goodbye. At the end, if you've maybe had a great time with your friends or your family, there are many different ways that we can say goodbye uh, when we've had that great time together. Now, what do you normally say? Uh, maybe you could say simply, well, goodbye. Uh, you might say, see you later. Uh, you might even say, see you tomorrow. Or if English is not your first language, you may say something else. So I've been trying uh, to <laughs> learn some different little <laughs> phrases. So we'll see how it goes. Um, if I'm not very good, you can always text me in or post on YouTube or whatever. But here we go. If you were French and said goodbye, you might say something like au revoir uh, or something like that. Or German. Um, you might say something like um, au revoir. Uh, or something like that. <laughs> if you're Polish, um, here's, here's what I was trying this morning, you could say something like do um, I think you need the shoulders actually to do the Polish one. So um, I think that's what, so make sure say do That's something else. That's all the Polish people. Um, if you're Lithuanian, um, then you might say something like I don't know why I'm getting more dramatic as I do this. Um, um, I've been trying to communicate with some of our Nigerian church family as well and see what I could say. And here's what I was encouraged to say. So maybe if you're Nigerian, you'll remember this. Uh, you would say something like this, Ego be later. Um, or maybe it's supposed to be sort of Nigerian street. So it's something like this, Ego be later, or something like that. All sorts of things that we could say. I could go on and on. Maybe you want me to stop. <laughs> but here's what I've noticed in the last few days in the UK. Uh, many of us have begun to change what we say to each other uh, our company. So instead of saying goodbye or see you later or see you tomorrow, uh, many people are saying stay safe. Maybe you've done it yourself. Uh, you, you see someone going away and you say stay safe. Now this morning I want us to pick up this phrase and I want us to go to Matthew chapter 7 and I want to show us what God in his book the Bible has to say about how we really stay safe. It's a wonderful phrase, stay safe. But what does the Bible say about how we truly stay safe? Well, I've got three things to say today as we answer this question. First, we stay safe by choosing the right road. That's verses 13 to 14. And now this is the first one. And if you look at verse 13, listen to what Jesus says. Enter through the narrow gates, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Now, what do you notice? Uh, adults, children, uh, what do you notice about the two different roads that Jesus describes? Well, they point out a few things. First, did you notice the width? Um, it's obvious, isn't it, really? Uh, one of the roads is really wide, but the other road is very narrow. Now, the whole point of this is that traveling on a narrow road is hard. It's difficult. But traveling on a road that is really wide is very, very easy. Now, we'll know that, don't we, when we drive our cars. Just think about it. Now, I know we're not really going out for a long time, but think back to the days uh, when you would get in your car, you would drive. If you drive on the motorway, it's easy, isn't it? Yeah, if you've got cruise control, and then you're driving away in your car, loads of space, all right, go quickly, it's safe, get there really, really fast as well. But compare that with driving on a really narrow lane, hedgerows all around you, you're, you're trying to get down the lane, it's actually quite difficult. Now, the same is true spiritually. Uh, following Jesus is the narrow road and following ourselves that's when we decide that I want to be in charge of my life well that is the wide road now you might think why is following Jesus difficult uh, following Jesus is so wonderful isn't it in so many ways but of course to follow Jesus means that I put him first and I live for his kingdom and friends we know that is not easy Whereas if I live for myself, and therefore I live in the wide road, that's the easy road. Well, no wonder it's easy, because if you live for yourself, you get to do whatever you want. Uh, whatever you think is best, or whatever you feel is best, 
That is what you do. And that is easy. So notice the width. Uh, here's another difference. Maybe if you're a child, you might want to pick this one out as well. Did you notice how many people are on the different roads? That's the second contrast. The wide road is really, really busy. But the narrow road is very, very quiet. Uh, that is, uh, many people around us will be living for themselves. Many people around us will be on the big road, the wide road. That is, many people will not be following Jesus. <coughs> uh, which means that if you are a Christian following Jesus, it often means that you'll be in the minority. That is, there won't be that many people around you uh, who are doing the same thing. Now, I think that is really important for us to hear because so often we don't want to stand out from the crowd, do we? So often, let's be honest, we want to be like everybody else. But here's the thing. If we choose to follow Jesus, we won't be like everybody else. We will be different. But I want to encourage you if you are following Jesus. So often you might look around and you may see all these other people not following Jesus. And you, may, you might think to yourself, I've made a wrong decision. Surely the majority of people cannot be wrong. Think about it. If you've ever been in that group situation when the, the group are asked kind of multiple choice questions. You know that kind of scene when someone says, like, put up your hand if you think it's option A. Or put up your hand if you think it's option B. And you hear the question and you think, I know the answer. It's obvious. It's option A. And then you put up your hand, option A, and you look around the room, and nobody else has got their hand up. So what are you thinking? You're thinking, I, I really thought it was option A, but surely the majority of people can't be wrong, and you're tempted, aren't you, to change your mind, and when the others put up hand for option B, you kind of go, well, maybe it's option B. I want to encourage you, following Jesus is the narrow road. It won't be as busy as the wide road, but Jesus says... That is the right road to be on. Be comforted. Be encouraged. Now, here's the question. Given the narrow road is harder, and given the narrow road is not very popular, why would anybody choose it? Well, because of where it leads. Now, did you get this, children? I know you're listening for the contrast, but what's the different destination of the different roads? Where does the narrow road lead? Uh, the Bible says the narrow road leads to life, whereas the wide road leads to where? To destruction. Now, Jesus is talking about what happens after we take our final breath in this life. He says those on the broad road, that is those who are living for themselves, those who are not following Jesus, will face destruction. That is, they will face God's judgment for all eternity as a consequence of rejecting his rightful rule in this life. So that's if you're on the broad road, it's popular, but that's the destination. And what's the contrast? Now, those on the narrow road, we're told, will enter into life. That's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful way of saying that when a Christian takes their final breath on this earth, they don't really die. Instead, they start to live. And what does that mean? Because when you take your final breath on this earth as a Christian, you go straight away into the presence of God and you dwell forever in the magnificent, beautiful presence of God, the God who loves you. And therefore you live. Now we know that there's a lot of fear around at the moment. People are afraid of all sorts of things. And some people are afraid of losing their jobs. Um, other people are afraid of not finding food. Uh, other people, maybe this is your family at the moment, other people are afraid of spending weeks of potential isolation as a family unit. Have a look around now who's with you. Do you think you'll make it? But of course, behind all the presenting fears, there is a bigger fear that we don't like to talk about. And that is the fear that we won't make it. And that is the fear of death. So when people are afraid, uh, we are very tempted, aren't we, to respond very quickly and say, don't be afraid. But is that right? 
Well, friends, it all depends on which road you are on. Let me say this very compassionately, but if right now that you're someone on the wide road, and that is someone who is living for yourself and not following Jesus, your savior, then you should be afraid. It's not guaranteed that you will die from coronavirus, but something else will get you one day. And then what? See, the wide road leads to destruction. And yet the good news of the Bible is that anybody, whatever they've done, can follow Jesus Christ. And you can know Jesus Christ today. So even now, as you listen to me, if you're on the wide road, even now, with a little prayer to Jesus, you can change the road. And you can change your eternal destination. And when you're on the narrow road, here's a comfort to many Christians who are listening today. This is the road where fear doesn't have to be present. Let me say, if you are a follower of Jesus, do not be afraid. Now, this doesn't mean that you won't get sick. It doesn't mean that you won't get severe symptoms. It doesn't mean that you won't die. But it does mean that the God who loves you is in complete control of everything that happens today, everything that happens tomorrow, and everything that will happen in the weeks and months to come. And here's the truth. The God who made you, the God who loves you, knows precisely how many chapters are left in your earthly story. And here's the amazing truth. When the final chapter of your earthly story is written, whenever that might be, a new book will begin in heaven. Where every single chapter of this new heavenly book is better than the chapter's before how do we say safe first by choosing the right path second okay you're listening children uh, we're moving on second how do you stay safe by listening to the right words listen to what jesus says in verse 15 and he says watch out for false prophets they come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ferocious wolves uh, throughout the Bible, uh, the history of the Bible, there have always been false prophets. Now, what does that mean? That is, there have always been people who have claimed to be God's spokesmen, but who were simply speaking from their own human imaginations. They would say, yeah, this is what God says, but actually, it wasn't what God says. Uh, they were just making it up. And in verse 20, uh, if you see that, we're told that we will recognize who these people are by what? By their fruits and like you would recognize a tree by their fruit you will recognize who these people are by their fruit as well that is by their character of their lives that is the way that they behave and by the content of their words so character and content now one of the things that false teachers do again and again in the bible is that they offer false comfort and they tell people what they want to hear they say peace 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 and they never talk about pain now, this is maybe not what we want to hear, but this is really good for us to hear. Uh, why do we need to know about <coughs> false prophets and false teachers? Because false prophets are... Now, did you see this? Uh, Jesus compares the false prophets to an animal. And what, is, what kind of animal does he compare it to? Uh, to a wolf. Now, what would you say to a flock of sheep? Just imagine, okay, the flock of sheep... And you see a flock of sheep and they're running away from a wolf. What would you say then? Well, you wouldn't rebuke the sheep, would you? You wouldn't say, oh, come on, sheep. Uh, you need to chill out a little bit. Stop being so selfish. Allow Mr. Wolf into your circle of friends. You wouldn't say that, would you? You would say, well done, guys, for running away. Because wolves are deadly for your health. Now, in order to speak to the sheep, you might have to translate that into sheep language. <laughs> so you might have to say, ba, 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 Mr. Wolf, ba, 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 ba. Okay, I told you I've been doing some research about how to speak different languages. <laughs> Friends, false words that contradict God's good words in the Bible may appear comforting, but we need to see them for what they are. They are wolfish. They are dangerous and they are destructive. 
Now, in this season when God has permitted, and he has permitted the coronavirus to spread around the world, he could have stopped it. He could have stopped it before it spread, but he has permitted it. Uh, we may come across all sorts of words that are designed to give us comfort. And some of these might even claim to be from God himself. But can I please encourage us to stick to what God has actually said in the Bible? There are no promises that this will be short. It may be short if that's what God determines, but there are no promises in the Bible. There are no promises in the Bible that if you are a Christian, you will not get sick. But there is a wonderful promise in God's word that Jesus is completely in control of everything. That's a promise. And there's a promise that Jesus' purposes for his world and for his people cannot ever be diverted or destroyed by any virus because he's in charge. So what I want to do is to encourage us to hold on to and to hold out the promises of God in the Bible. Jesus is strong, he's kind, and he's close to us by his spirit to carry us through whatever each day brings. So, how do we stay safe? Well, second, by listening to the right words. And third, and much more briefly, third, how do we stay safe? Okay, children, have you got it? Third section, we stay safe by building on the right foundation. Now, we know the story, I think, pretty well, don't we? Verses 24 uh, to 27, there are two people... And what do the two people want to do? They want to build a house. And they both seem to get on pretty well, don't they? Because they both succeed in building a house. But then what happens? A powerful storm hits and everything changes. Uh, one house is ruined and one house stands. And what is the one thing that makes the difference between the house that stands and the house that collapses? Well, the one thing that makes the difference is the foundations. Uh, one of the houses is built on the sand, rubbish foundations. And therefore, when the storm comes, the house is over. Uh, the other house is built on the rock. And therefore, when the storm hits, it stands. So what does all this mean in real life? If you've got your Bibles, look at this. Jesus tells us in verses 24 and 26. Verse 24, Jesus says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Or verse 26. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. It's really quite simple, isn't it? Yeah. If we listen to Jesus and do what he says, our life will stand when the storms hit. Now, whether that is the ultimate storm of God's judgment that is coming in the future, if we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll be safe because he's died for us once and for all. Or the multiple storms that we face every day in life. And we know that right now there is a storm, the storm of this corona virus. But there is a way to stay safe, a way to stay safe emotionally through these challenging times, whatever it is that God permits. And that is to listen to the words of Jesus, to hear the words of Jesus, to believe them, and then to put them into practice. And that is how we stay safe through the storm. Let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that we would believe it. We pray that we would be safe as we follow all these practices. Thank you so much that Jesus is the great saviour that we all need. Amen. Amen.